Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started with these friction notes. So when we think about friction, we think about a force that is resulting from an object that is sliding. We also know that friction is used to slow things down. It's important to note though that friction can still be present even if an object is not moving because friction can prevent an object from moving. So we actually have an equation for the force of friction and it's the following. Force friction is equal to mu times force normal. And force friction is measured in newtons. Force normal is also measured in newtons. But mu is unitless. So some of you guys may have heard of mu before. But the mu that you probably heard of is in regards to Pokemon. Uh, this mu is not Pokemon. This mu is the coefficient of friction. But if we were to talk about the mu in Pokemon, that would be the 151st Pokemon. So the coefficient of friction is going to tell us how easy or difficult it is to slide two objects together. So mu, or the coefficient of friction, is usually a number between 0 and 1. And 0 is just telling us that that surface, or those two surfaces that we're sliding together, are very slippery with each other and zero would actually be a frictionless surface. Typically in physics, a surface that we consider frictionless would be ice. One, on the other hand, would be a very, very rough surface. So maybe one could be sandpaper on sandpaper. Those two surfaces are very rough and would create a lot of friction when rubbed together. So we're going to take a look at a simulation right now and observe what happens to our friction force as we keep adding more and more applied force. All right guys, let's take a look at our simulation here. So right here we have some guy and we have him pushing a box. This box has a mass of 50 kilograms and we're just gonna start applying a force to this box and see what happens to it. So let's start with 50 newtons. Well, we see that he's applying a force of 50 newtons, but friction's pushing back with 50 newtons. Because these forces are balanced, the box is not going anywhere. Now we up that to 100 newtons. We see that he's applying 100 newtons, but friction's still pushing back with 100 newtons. So now we're gonna slowly increase the applied force and see what happens to the friction force. All right, so we see right here that we're at 125 newtons of applied force and still 125 newtons of friction force, and the box is not going anywhere. Let's add one more newton of force and see what happens. Well, once we add one more newton, we notice that we're applying a force of 126 newtons now, and friction is somehow decreased to 94 newtons. Our net force in this case is 32 newtons. The mass of the box is still the same, it did not change we need to take a look at why friction was 125 newtons and applied force was 125 newtons and the box wasn't going anywhere. But then once we made the applied force just a little bit bigger at 126 newtons, why friction dropped all the way down to 94 newtons and the box began to move. So the first thing we should have noticed in the simulation was that there were two force frictions. There was a max force friction of 125 newtons and that was present when the box was at rest. So let's use this force friction in our new force friction equation to find out what the coefficient of friction was in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the equation just like I did below. Now I'm gonna solve for force normal. I know force normal is just mass times gravity because we're on a flat surface. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my numbers. My mass was 50, gravity is 9.8 because I'm on Earth. So I find out that force normal should just be 490 newtons. I go ahead, I plug that into my equation above. Force friction 125 equals mu times 490. Divide 490 over, and I find out mu is equal to 0 0.255. Again, mu is just the coefficient of friction. And this mu specifically is the coefficient of friction when that box was at rest. Now let's look at that other force friction, and that other force friction was 94 newtons. And that was the force of friction when the box was moving slash accelerating. 
Now we're going to repeat the steps that we did on the other side to solve for the coefficient of friction. We have our force friction equation. We're going to plug in 94 for force friction, 490 for force normal. Because force normal did not change, the mass did not change, nor did the gravitational pull. And then we're going to divide the force normal to the other side and find out that the coefficient of friction should be equal to 0 0.191. So I'm sure some of you are thinking to yourselves, but wait, we have two different coefficients of friction. And the coefficient of friction is supposed to tell us how easy or difficult it is to slide two objects together. Well, the two objects we were sliding was the box and the ground. And those two objects didn't change. So how did we end up with two different coefficients of friction? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. There are two types of coefficients of friction. There is a kinetic friction, and we'll talk about that first. And the kinetic friction is when an object is moving. So it is the coefficient of friction in regards to moving objects. And moving meaning that the object must be sliding. Something important to note is that once an object begins to slide, its kinetic friction will act at a constant rate. So that kinetic friction will be the same value regardless how much force you are applying to that object. The other coefficient of friction is the static coefficient of friction. And that is in regards to objects that are not moving. So this is the friction needed to prevent motion. So when we solve or are given a force friction in regards to a static coefficient of friction, so an object that is not moving, that is just telling us the maximum friction that we are going to need to overcome to start moving our object. And that object is always initially at rest if it has a static coefficient of friction. And again, we should have noticed in the simulation that our static friction can increase. It's not a constant value. It will get bigger and bigger and bigger until it reaches a maximum value. That maximum value is the force required to move an object that is at rest. And this is why it's always harder to start moving an object than to keep an object in motion. So think about if it, your car ever died and you had to push it, it's always a lot harder to get that car moving. But once you have it moving, it's a lot easier to keep it moving. So based off of our data, we can clearly say that the static coefficient of friction is greater than the kinetic coefficient of friction. And just like I said, it is easier to keep an object in motion that is already in motion than it is to move an object that is at rest. Hmm kind of sounds like Newton's first law. Objects in motion stay in motion, and objects at rest stay at rest. Let's take a look at two examples really fast. Our first example says a large block of ice is being pulled across a frozen lake. The block of ice has a mass of 250 kilograms, and the coefficient of friction between the two surfaces is small. Mu k is about 0 0.05. What is the force of friction that is acting on the block of ice? Well, first let's dissect this problem and look for important information. I see right here that it says the mass is 250 kilograms, so I'm going to mark that. also tells me the coefficient of friction between the two surfaces is mu k, 0 0.05. It already has it marked, but let's remember that k is talking about kinetic friction, which means that the block of ice is in motion. Now we want to figure out what is the force of friction acting on the block of ice. Well, we're just going to use our friction equation. Force friction is equal to mu times force normal. Since it's on a frozen lake, we can assume that this lake is flat, unless said otherwise. So because it's a flat surface, we know that force normal is equal to mass times gravity. Therefore, we know that force normal is just equal to 250 times 9.8. We do some math. We find out that force normal is just equal to 2,450 newtons. Now we take that number, bring it back up, and plug it into our equation. So we have force friction equals mu, which is 0 0.05, times force normal, which is 2,450. That tells us that force friction should be equal to 122.5 newtons. 
So our second question says a 5,500 Newton force is applied. So it's talking about applied force to a sled full of firewood in a snow covered force. The skis of the sled have a coefficient of static friction. So we know static friction is the one that prevents movement. So I'll write that here, prevents movement. And it's 0 0.75. If the fully loaded sled has a mass of 700 kilograms, now we know the mass too. What is the maximum force of static friction? And is the force applied enough to overcome it? So this is really two questions in one. So let's just tackle this like we did before. And first, let's find out what the force friction is. We know that force friction is equal to mu times force normal. Again, this sled is on a flat surface because they haven't told us otherwise. So we can assume it's flat, which just means that force normal is equal to mass 700 times gravity, 9.8. We find out that force normal should just be equal to 6,860 newtons. Now that we know force normal, we can plug that into our equation. That gives us force friction equals mu. In this case, mu is 0 0.75 times force normal, which is 6,860 newtons. Doing that, we find out that force friction should be equal to 5,145 newtons. So the question asks, what is the maximum force of static friction? And is the force applied enough to overcome it? Well, the maximum force of static friction is right here. It's 5,145 newtons. And we are applying a force of 5,500 newtons. So force applied is 5,500, and force friction is 5,145 newtons. In this case, since our force applied is greater than our force friction, we're going to be able to overcome that static friction and move our sled. So our sled is going to move, and not only is it going to move, since it's bigger than force friction, it's going to accelerate that sled. So something important I want to mention before we wrap these up is always pay attention to what type of mu value you're given. Like we said before, mu k is for objects in motion and mu s is for objects that are not in motion. So whenever you're asked if the object will start moving, you need to take into consideration the coefficient of static friction. And if we have enough applied force to overcome the force friction from that static friction, then our object will start moving. But sometimes we're not gonna have enough force. So our object is not going to move. So just pay attention again to which coefficient of friction you're given, if it's static or kinetic. Again, static is the coefficient of friction that we need to overcome. Kinetic is the one when the object is already in motion. Because kinetic means motion, static is at rest.